when we know the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, then I had to question whether or not God is in that or, or not. And we need to do that. And, you know, over in China, um, they meet underground because their government does not want Christianity to be established. That's right. right? So, if they're meeting underground against the rules of the government, then are they violating Romans 13? Think about that. We're to submit to every governing authority for the powers that exist or ordained by God. But are we really submitting to the governing authorities when we do that? Or are we going against the Word of God? Could it be that we're being tested? Yes. What do you think? Are we being tested? I think we are. Yes. You know, the Bible tells us that in the end times that we're going to go through these types of tests. And not everybody's going to uh, follow the Lord. They're going to bow and, and they're going to submit to the government. But you know what? God is asking us to fellowship with Him and get into that place of the Spirit where we hear His voice and we follow Him no matter what. The key is intimacy with Jesus, yes. hearing His voice, and following Him. Nice That's the key. Amen. And so if Jesus says, I want you to meet together and worship me and do this, that, or the other thing, then when we do that, then we are following the will of God even, even if it goes against the rules and the laws of man. So, and I was telling somebody today that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm over here in a meeting, and they said, well, how can you be in a meeting when Governor Newsom outlawed doing meetings? He said you cannot gather together and, and do such a thing. And my response was, well, you know what? I feel like God wants me here. Amen. So I'm going to be here. Praise Lord. This is what God wants. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, if they pass laws and set rules in motion that permanently prevent you from doing what the Word of God says to do, what are you going to do? And if they say, well, if you go to church, then you're going to be fined or maybe put into jail, what are you going to do? Well, some people, they would say, well, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to be fined. So, I guess I better not go to church. I'll just have church at home. Now, you know what? I think it's great to have church at home. But we need to gather together and assemble with the brothers and sisters Amen. in Jesus. Because yes. that's where Jesus is. Yes. I mean, the Word of God tells us yes. that where two or more are gathered together in His name, yes. there He is Amen. in our midst. Hallelujah. And it's just like the enemy to try to get us to just backslide a little bit. I mean, you don't have to go to church. It seems to me I heard in Genesis chapter 3, a temptation that came against Adam and Eve, right? Yes, yes. I know everybody here knows that little exchange that took place in Genesis 3. But let's go to that for a moment. Because this temptation is what is actually in play right now. There is a battle over who has authority concerning mankind. Yes. So Genesis chapter 3, if you could, go to verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, now th this is not just a snake, this is Satan using the snake 
the serpent as a vehicle yes. to speak. Yes. God has already established his will in Genesis chapter 2. Mm -hmm. He told Adam and Eve, or actually Adam, Eve wasn't around. He said to Adam, he said, now this, this, this is a garden and I want you to tend it and keep it. I want you to take care of it. You can, you can partake of all the trees of the garden, but there's one I don't want you to partake of. How many of you know which one that was? That was the, what, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yes. So God set limits. He set boundaries and he said, you can have all this, but you can't have that. So that was God's rule. That was God's law. That was what he wanted to do. And how many of you know when God says something, that is it. It's final. That is the will of God. Amen. Now, what happens? Well, Satan was already around, of course. He heard God create everything. He heard God speak into existence, everything. And so in Satan's mind, he's thinking, okay, what can I do to try to hinder and hamper what God is establishing? Because I'm on earth, and I thought earth was for me, and I thought I had dominion over the earth. I can't let God create mankind and then have him <clears throat> possess what I already have. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've got to stop mankind from having dominion on earth. Because I know as sure as he has dominion, he's going to kick me out and he's going to replace me and I won't have anything. So God creates the heavens and the earth. He sets forth guidelines in Genesis 2 for Adam regarding the tending of the garden. But he has to avoid the knowledge of good and evil. Now, what do you think the knowledge of good and evil represents today in life? Think about it. What does it represent? Well, it represents, and you can use your imagination here, it represents anything that looks good, that sounds good, that feels good, that makes me feel blessed. It represents anything out there that may not be the will of God, but by golly, it's going to bless me. It's going to add wisdom to me. It's going to give me knowledge. It's going to help me to do the things I want to do. That's right. <clears throat> so, We have a, a battle going on. Satan is already setting up a strategy to try to undo what God spoke. So we come around to Genesis 3 and we have Satan encountering the woman. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Well, what did God say? God said, no, don't partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God did say, don't go outside of me as your source. Let me be your supreme source. Let me be your supreme supply. Let me be the one that directs your life. I want you to learn to be led by my spirit. I want you to learn to hear what I say so that I can lead you into the abundance I have for you. But if you step away from that, then you're going to step away from your protection. You're going to step away from the covering. You're going to step away from my blessing. And outside of me, there's nothing but darkness. There's nothing but misery and hell. Yes. 
So God tells us, Adam, Adam shares it with Eve. They both know, and you know what? They have intimacy with God. They could hear God's voice. So if they heard God's voice, then what happened to them? Why did they yield to the counterfeit? Why did they yield to the enemy? Well, it didn't happen instantaneously. It's like today. The enemy is beginning to step out. He's beginning to do the scenario of Genesis 3. He's confronting us. He's confronting the Christian. And he's saying to the Christian and to the pastors, he's saying, well, did God really mean that you have to assemble together? Did God really mean that you have to gather together and congregate together and not forsake the fellowship of the saints? Did God really mean that? I mean, surely God knows that, you know, there's going to come a time where you can't do that. And so, people that don't know God in governmental positions begin to strategize how they can block that commandment of God from manifesting in the church. And I don't want to get into names of politicians, but I believe this whole, this whole COVID-19 event is a strategy. I believe it is a highly and a well thought of and a thought out strategy by the left, the liberals, the progressives, those that don't want God, those that could care less about God and the church to undermine the church. Because really the devil knows that, what is it, the devil knows that it's the church that is really his hindrance. It's not really Donald Trump, it's the church. The devil took offense to Donald Trump wanting the church to be a part of his campaign and helping him out. Yes. The enemy is mad about that. So they figure, well, the enemy is saying, oh, we've got to get rid of Trump. Well, under that, the enemy is saying, because the church is being propagated through him. Because the church is being built up through him, therefore we got to stop Trump. It's the church the enemy is after. Yes. Trump is a man. That's, right. That's all he is. He's a man. Great man. Strong, authoritative man. Yes. We need presidents like him. Exactly. I hope he makes it the second time around. Yes. Because we need that. But he's only as good as our prayers. He's only as good as God being with him. Yes. And that's it. So if the enemy can use these leftist liberals to somehow block and hinder the church from being effective, then in the enemy's mind, he might have a chance. Right? He might have a chance. So, this whole attack against the church today is a strategy by the enemy using the vehicle of the leftist progressives, the liberals, and I believe they conspired with people of China. I believe that they allowed this so-called COVID-19 situation to manifest and I also believe that it's pumped up way above what it really is. I mean, they have to make it look worse than it really is in order to do what they're doing right now. Yes. But I believe there is a COVID-19, but I believe it's pushed way beyond the reality of where it's at. Yes. Yes. It's not as bad as what they say. Mm -hmm. So we've got people in government used by the devil to say no. Don't meet in church. You can't come together in church. Now, I knew this is a bunch of malarkey when they said, oh, you can't have praise 
and worshipers get up there. You can't do that. Nope. If they're paid, no, no. Can't do that. You can have a volunteer come in for a little bit. But they tried to block the mouth of praise and worshipers. Does that sound familiar? Can you think of any situation in the Bible where that took place before? Yes, yes. Well, how about Egypt? How about when Moses was wanting God's people free so they can go out and worship yes. the Lord? Yes, yes, yes. And, of course, Pharaoh knew that, hell, we can't let these guys go out and worship God. I mean, they do that, man, the power of God's going to come into the Israeli camp, and then they're going to bring that power in our land, and then they're going to subdue us. <coughs> Excuse me. So the enemy doesn't want the gathering of God's people in a setting of praise and worship. Because power is released. Yes. Because anointing is released. Hallelujah. Because authority is released. Yes. And the greatest, the greatest attack that the church can have against the enemy, the most effective attack is the proclamation of the heart of God yes. by the prophetic word. Hallelujah. Because it takes the worship environment, yes. it takes the anointing of God, the presence of God to create the prophetic environment yes. where thus saith the Lord can come forth. Hallelujah. And when the thus saith the Lord comes forth, then guess what happens? The Word of God shatters yes. the darkness. Yes. The Word of God destroys the enemy's habitation. Hallelujah. The declaration of the will of God yes. destroys Satan's kingdom, dismantles demonic governments, dismantles demonic cultures. But if you break the church up, you don't have the assembly together, you don't have the environment of the presence of God, then you're not going to have the prophetic unction that is that it takes to destroy the devil. Yes, it's, it's, it's all part of the enemy's strategy. And we have to understand that we cannot bow to the enemy. Amen. Now, in China and other places, churches gather together and they do this underground. In other words, they don't make it a a visible deal. They don't put billboards up and, you know, make big flyers and pass them out. Tell everybody because they don't want to get persecuted. And that's wise. So I believe we need to gather. And, you know, we can gather together. We can have social distancing. But we need to honor God. Amen. <laughs> above the world. We need to honor the will of God. Hallelujah. No matter what the price, we need to honor the word of God. Yes, 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 yes. So anyways, there's di there's different stages if you if you read down in Genesis 3 here of digression. Falling away from the will of God. Now, think about this. So the serpent, being cunning, and I do have to say this, the enemy is not stupid. He's smart. He studies people. He studies cultures. He studies environments. And he comes up with strategies. The enemy is a, a strategist. So he can't be stupid. So he comes to the woman has God indeed said? So the first attack is, did God really mean what he said? Did God really mean that you have to meet together? Did God really mean you have to pray? Read the Bible. So Eve responds in a relatively good way. I mean, she's doing the best she can. The woman said to the serpent, 
We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in the, in the middle of the garden, God has said, you'll not eat it, touch it, or you'll die. <coughs> well, you know what? She's pretty close. So the serpent responds. Now at this point, you have stage two of the attack against humanity. First, the enemy casts a little doubt about the Word of God. Number two, he comes back to your intellectual rehearsed response to his, his voice. And he says, you will not surely die. In other words, if you don't go to church, fine, have church at home. If you don't you know, if you don't pray as much as you know you should, well, that, that's cool. We're, we're under grace, not under law. If you don't want to read your Bible for a couple days, take a week off, you don't, you don't have to. Where does it say in the Bible you have to read every day? And see how the enemy works. Did God say, did God really mean what he said? So... <clears throat> It's interesting that the woman, she quotes back what she knows about the will of God, and the serpent says, well, you're not going to die. So the next stage is, you're not going to die. And then the stage after that is, God knows. See, God knows, he knows what you don't know. He knows that if you, if you do what I'm saying, that you're going to have more than you could ever possibly want. Now, a lot of people get hung up at that stage there. Go to school and study for this vocation. Spend years doing this. And then when you're all done, you'll have that under your belt and you can provide. But you know what? Suppose you were never called to do that. Suppose God wanted you to go to Him and find out His plan and purpose, and maybe God had a plan for missionary work, or maybe to go and preach the gospel. Amen. But you decided to partake of the tree of the knowledge of an evil. You were convinced by that message that man told you that you need to learn all these trades and get all this knowledge in you so that you can be a person that would be productive in life. Well, how many people have taken the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? 90%? 95%? I think if we look at Hollywood, Hollywood was created by people that partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They thought they had something going. They thought they were going to make a life of themselves, be actors and actresses. And now today in this high technology world we live in, people are pursuing technology, advancement in technology and electronics, and they're so steeped into it that they're figuring out ways to circumvent the purpose of God. It's sad. I, I see all these kids. They're delving into their little computer games. They spend hours and hours and hours doing their little video games, their little computer games. It's like, what's happened? How is this happening? Why aren't they being told to go to God? Amen. Why aren't they being told to go to church? Yes, yes, yes. You see, there's a slow, progressive, kind of a well-planned out strategy of the enemy to wean people from true authority. Let's get people away from God and His Word. Let's get them away from church. Whatever it takes, that's what the enemy is trying to do. Get people away from church. Because if they don't come into the environment of the presence of God and hear the authoritative voice of God, the enemy says, I've got them. They'll be weak. 
They won't have any authority. They will be ineffective against me. And that's what the devil wants. You know, I hear there are a lot of pastors out there that are just like, they're going through it. I mean, they're discouraged. They want to give up. I'm sure there's probably a lot of people out there quitting, yes. quitting on the ministry. Well, you know what? <clears throat> Don't quit. Amen. Go against the enemy. Yes, Lord. Stay with the guidelines of the Word of God. Yes. Live by the rules of this book. If you do, you will be blessed. Amen. If you get away from the guidelines of the Word of God, you're not going to be blessed. That's right. Now you may feel better, but the enemy can put false feelings, yes. a false sense of being right when you're in the wrong. It's compromised to not have church meetings. Now, I'm giving you my view, my perception of the Word of God. I'm taking what the Bible says and I'm telling you what the Bible says. Amen. Okay? So I'm not trying to come against Governor Gavin Newsom. I'm not trying to rebel against him. But what I'm saying is what they are trying to do to the church in California is sin. And we need not to bow to what's being propagated in this great state. Amen? Amen? We need to stand up. Amen. We, we need to be the authority of God. Now, when Adam and Eve, I'm going I'm to wrap this up real quick here. When Adam and Eve ended up dialoguing with the enemy, and by the way, a lot of people do that. We, we have a dialogue with the enemy in our minds. He says, oh no, you, you don't have to do what the Word of God says. And then in our mind, we're saying, oh, but I need to do that. But no, you don't need to do that because you know what? God doesn't care. You can, do, you can do something else. And we fall just in our minds to the will of God. We transgress the will of God. And when Adam and Eve both partook of that forbidden fruit, then they lost the glory. They lost the empowerment of God. And God had to drive them out of His kingdom. He had to drive them out of their state of blessedness. And in fact, these stages of decline can be avoided, and they could have avoided that, but because they didn't, they lost everything. Yes. One thing you don't want to lose in Christianity, you don't want to lose the anointing. You don't want to lose the presence of God. You don't want to lose the glory. Lord. You've got to hang on to the glory and the presence of God yes. because your life depends on it. Amen. Because without God's presence, you have no ability to confront the enemy and defeat him. You'll never succeed. You'll never be more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ without being right with God. So, I'm going to close... And let me say this, that uh, God is calling us to come back to Him. And if we have in any way deviated from the will of God, if we have walked away from the will of God, then today is the day to get back with God. Today is the day to get right with God. If we have said yes to the enemy, we need to say no to Him and repent to God. Amen. And God wants to restore yes. the glory and the anointing that He has called us to walk in. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we need the glory of God. Yes, yes, yes. We need it. Yes. Without the glory, we are we're just nothing but flesh. Flesh that cannot do anything. Mm. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. I want to thank you Hallelujah. for allowing us to gather together. Yes, 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 yes. And God, I ask you to bless and reward each and every person here yes, that was willing to be here. Hallelujah. God, 
Make us people that will say yes to you and no to evil. Lord, we don't want to be compromised. Lord, we don't want to be those that are willing to yield to temptation. God, you want us to be those that hear your voice and say yes to you. And God, in these end times, God, we are vitally in need of hearing the voice of God. We need to know which way to go and which way not to go. God, we don't want to come under a natural realm government and have them dictate to us how to live our lives. God, restore true spiritual life and authority to us. Help us, God, to live Christianity with your full blessing upon us. Yes. Father, we repent for walking away from you. Father, we repent for listening to the lies of the enemy and bowing to his lies. Father, forgive us. Lord, we receive your mandate today to hear your voice and to do your will and nothing can stop that. Lord. Father, I thank you for a blessing upon each and every person here. Yes, Lord. Father, if they need healing, heal their bodies. Yes, yes, yes. If they need restoration yes. in any area, restore them, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Build them back up and make them the person they're called to be. Grant to them yes. your authority yes. to be all that you intended them to be. Yes, God, I cancel every curse. Hallelujah. I cancel every lie of the enemy. In Jesus' name, yes. I break off Hallelujah. the hindrances in their life. I break off the witchcraft, the Jezebel that has come against your people. And God, we declare that the city of Anaheim will have their eyes open to the love of Jesus. That they will want to come to the kingdom of God. And God, even in this time and hour, many are out there feeling hopeless. They don't know what to do. Many are struggling financially. Many are out of work. They don't know what's going on. Well, God, they need you. God, I pray that you grant to us a spirit of evangelism. That you put a sickle in our hands. That we would go out and share Jesus with people. And God, if they need prayer, we pray for them. God, I speak blessing and restoration over every person here. In fact, I speak that over the city of Anaheim. Yes. I say, Anaheim, yes. come back to Jesus. Yes. Anaheim, yes. be delivered yes. and serve yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. I praise you for that, Lord. I praise you. For you are a mighty God. Thank you, Lord. You alone are worthy. Yes. We love you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, heal your people, God. Yes, 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 yes. Heal the pain they have. If you have pain in your body, God says, I want to heal you today. I want to deliver you today from the oppressors. Hallelujah. Lord, we release that healing. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we love you. I'm just waiting on the Lord right now. I feel, I feel like a prophetic kind of an unction coming on me. I praise you, Lord. 
you, Lord. This brother here in the, the t-shirt, the dark t-shirt here. <clears throat> I just feel like the Lord is saying that he wants to raise you up. And that God says that I want you to be a force of my kingdom. Amen. And I want you to declare my kingdom wherever you go. I feel like the Lord is saying that he wants you to be activated. You have a, an evangelistic anointing on your life. But there's a prophetic on you too. But God says, I want you to be a powerhouse for me. I want you to study to show yourself approved. Study my word, the Lord says. Study my word and know me. And I will raise you up and I will use you to be one that proclaims my will. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for this other brother here. I thank you, Lord God, that you have given that man <clears throat> wisdom. Lord, this man has wisdom from heaven. And God, his wisdom can change negative circumstances. And they can become positive. I thank you, Lord, that he knows the word. That, Lord, he understands the word of God. And that, God, he can speak and share with clarity your mind and your heart. God, I speak blessing over him. Yes, Lord. Father God, use him. Thank you, Lord. Raise him up Thank you, Lord. to be an end time voice Thank you, Lord. in the sphere that you've called him to. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for that. Thank you, Lord God. Father, we declare that Southern California is being revived. I just feel the Lord saying, I am going to revive California. Thank you, Lord. And though California, you are being attacked. And though the enemy raises authority against my kingdom, but the Lord says, I am going to pull the enemy's seat of authority down. Hallelujah. I am removing his seat of authority yes, and he will be yes. rid of in this state. Hallelujah. And I will cause my kingdom yes, to grow. Yes. And I will cause my kingdom Thank you, Lord. to come back Thank you, Lord. in greater power Thank you, Lord. and authority. And I will deal with those that have come against me, says the Lord. And I will stop them. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I speak life over you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for her heart. Thank you, Lord. Bless her. I thank you. Revive her. Let her be used by you in a mighty way. A handmaiden of the Lord that will declare the things of God in Jesus' name. Lord, bless pastor here. Father, I thank you for giving him a heart for you. I thank you, Lord, that he is a man that will do whatever you say. The fact that he's even here today having a meeting means that he wants to please you. So, God, I ask you to bless him and reward him. In the name of Jesus. Lord, increase the anointing on his life. And let him flow in the realm of the Spirit, the realms of glory. Realms of glory. God, release realms of glory in this church. Father, I just, I see people 
in the environment of your glory. I see the cloud and presence of God in this place and people coming up saying, please, we need prayer. We want more of Jesus. And I, I just see people getting filled with the Holy Spirit, slain by the Holy Spirit, healed by the power of the Holy Spirit according to the Word of God. I see that happening. Waves of the presence of God coming into this place. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you for that. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, reward pastor's obedience. Reward him, Lord. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you all for being here today. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee shalom, peace.